In early September 2012, a serious accident took place at the Baknang airfield, involving a four-seater, single-engine DR-400 aircraft. The plane, which was performing at an air show, took off on a sightseeing flight in favorable weather conditions, with low wind and warm temperatures. Then, from a height of 15 to 20 meters, it crashed to the ground, killing three people and seriously injuring a fourth. Photos and video of the accident clearly show how the pilot attempted to counteract the rotational movement of the aircraft using the plane's ailerons. Accident records described a very experienced pilot who had himself flown the plane to the air show. He had accumulated many flight hours had flown the same aircraft several times and had already flown several sightseeing flights at air shows. Sifting through the extensive photographic and video evidence, it emerged that 39 seconds before the DR-400 took off, a five-ton single-engine AN-2 biplane had taken off from the same runway. To determine whether wake vortices could have played a role in the accident, we asked DLR engineers to carry out a simulation. In the upper animation, we can see the descent of the two separate vortex cores, which fall to a height of around 10 meters. That is where the ground effect begins. This is exactly what happened in the accident, where the vortex cores had a diameter of at least one meter. In the lower picture, we see the danger zone that we've calculated for a DR-400 positioned behind an Antonov AN-2 in takeoff mode, in still air conditions. This animation shows how the danger zones are developing over time. And here, the third ring of this danger zone shows roughly what was happening on the day of the accident, namely that the DR-400 took off 40 seconds after the biplane. You can clearly see that the danger zone is so large that it almost exactly covers the wingspan of the DR-400. With such a danger zone, the ailerons of the DR-400 wouldn't be effective enough to counteract the external interference caused by the Antonov. The flight tests are designed to show whether or not the results calculated by our DLR engineers match the results of our practical tests. Of course, the flight tests on the ground were not sufficient, so we took both planes up to a height of 2,000 feet to study the effects of wake turbulence on the DR-400 at that altitude. Matthias Kramer from the company Messwerk fitted the DR-400 with special measuring equipment. Here is the measuring computer with a memory card where all the data will be stored. This here is the signal processing for the pressure sensors, which allow us to measure the height and speed of the aircraft. At the front here, you see this small black box. That's the inertial sensor, which lets us measure the orientation angle of the plane, and therefore its rolling angle. We recruited test pilot Rolf Hankers to carry out the flight tests. In the DLR's model calculations, we saw how wake turbulence from the AN-2 would have an impact on the DR-400. In the ground tests, we saw that the smoke successfully reproduced the wake vortices from the AN-2 and largely confirmed the model calculations. Now we want to see what impact the wake turbulence will have on the DR-400 in the air in real flight conditions. At first, it was a bit difficult to find the exact location of the wake vortices. We had the smoke from the AN-2, and with the first tests, we flew in at around 800 meters altitude. The turbulence kicks in when you get close to the vortex core, but when we got right inside the core, which we managed a couple of times, it turned us completely onto our side, and we no longer had any way of controlling the rolling speeds. And if you're close to the ground, you're not going to survive. This shows the first real hit from the wake vortex. At a speed of 130 km per hour, you can see the rolling angle is around zero, and then here it goes up to nearly 90 degrees, which really threw us into a vertical position. The reaction was so sudden and so extreme that we had no idea what was coming. We knew that we'd be flying into the vortex, but when you go in unprepared, it hits you so suddenly, flips you over, and already you're going down.
And that was actually the surprising discovery, because we'd always thought that it was large passenger planes that created major wake turbulence. The fact that a comparably small aircraft like the 5-ton AN-2 can create such a vortex, strong enough to turn over a DR-400, that's a significant discovery.